Absolutely, not an issue. Okay. I'd be happy to do that. That's great. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very Under much. Under those conditions, you're good to go. Yes, thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yep. Next uh, on the agenda is 124 Pine Tree Road. It's another swimming pool. <laughs> it's a very popular item here tonight. <laughs> Could you identify yourselves and who you're with? My name's John Pusey. I'm with Carlton Pool. Okay. The microphone, please. John Pusey, Carlton Pools. And this is Kathy Lieberman, Hi. who's the owner. Okay, so if you could explain to us what your your plan is here. Well, our plan is to put in a, a small pool. It's 450 square feet. Okay. Um, with a spa. Um, there's really no trees very close to where the pool will go. Uh, I think we're, we're coming here tonight because of the amount of dirt that's coming out of the hole again. Um, it's over the uh, threshold. I think you have a 60 cubic yard threshold, and this is, ours is going to be about 70. So um, we're putting up tree protection on all the trees that are in the vicinity, and silt fence and the normal things that are required. Okay. The uh the tree protection that I see suggested is, again, as the previous one, not um, the, the, under the new ordinance. This looks like the plastic type fence. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. The, the new ordinance requires a uh, six foot chain link with metal stakes. Yeah, I heard you on the last okay. one. Okay. Yeah. Um, your limited disturbance is coming very close to some significant trees that we don't know what they are. I'm supposing that DEC means deciduous? Yes. Excuse me, sir. Would you be able to, would it be possible to uh, pull the, find the compass rose, would it be possible to pull the limited disturbance adjacent to the house a little closer to the house? Uh, that'll give your trucks or equipment a little bit more room to get around and, and possibly stay away from those larger trees? Yes, actually we could do that rather easily. Because it's around, it's around, it scales out at like eight or ten feet. Yep. And that might keep the drivers or the operators away from the, the, the two heritage trees. And, you know, they still have to wrap around the birch, but I think it would make it uh, a yeah, little we don't easier. Have a problem with that. We have, do we have steep slopes there? We have 25%? Um, this gray, the gray, the dotting? Where the deep end of the pool is, it's, there is a slope there. We will be putting, placing some of the soil that comes out of the excavation in that area. <clears throat> Just on your egress again, uh, there's an area that has little dots on it, like a band. Uh, from, from the existing driveway, your limited disturbance kind of cuts through this banded area that has dots. Yeah. Is that, is that a, does that indicate steep slopes right there? On the, 
it's steeper. <coughs> that's that's the area with the has, there is a hill there. Yes. S so would you would you be able to tuck that limit of disturbance toward the house, being as it's a steep slope, or would you have to cut that slope out of your way to get your trucks back there? If you ha if if that Steve mentioned, if you had to move it toward the house. Well, the trucks would go uh, on, the, on the downside of that steep slope area. I think they're going to have to level that out a little bit. It's a right. That's what I'm after here. Yeah, because it's there's it's a two foot contour, and the current LOD is is right in the middle of that. So if they were to bring that a little closer to the house, you know, whatever equipment they have that they're excavating the pool can level that out a little bit, and they could get them back there and keep them away from those um, large trees. Thank you. Are, are you showing a, a grade change in the back around the pool? You said you were going to be moving some fill toward the, what would it be, the west side of the pool there? If, if north is, do we have a north on this? North is to the left. Oh, I'm sorry. It, it would be to, you said you're going to be doing a little grading to the north side of the pool with the, it north is to the left, to, le to my left, to your left. Uh, where that birch tree, you see where the small birch tree is? Okay. That's, that's the area where we'd be grading to the left of that, not, not where the birch tree is, but to the left of that, right in there. Oh, uh, where that 344 line gets connected there? Yes. Okay. Not down, not toward these big trees? No. Okay. Is any uh, topsoil uh, being stored on site? Yes. Where do you intend to do that? Yeah, so the last one didn't have it on there either, I guess. Yeah, we have to store some topsoil, um, you know, after, after the pool is built so that that soil can be put back around the patio area. Um, I, I would say it would be down beyond that 18-inch birch down in that area. We can show that on a plan, though, if that's required. Yeah. I mean, actually, you're going to have to show it beyond that because that's your your way in and out. So you'll have to stock it somewhere beyond. You'll have to extend your limited disturbance between the 36-inch deciduous and the 30-inch deciduous deciduous tree. Trees. Yeah, so the trucks can get in, get, get past it, and then, yeah. And and you'll need to show that. That'll be a comment on your grading permit too, to okay. show your your topsoil stockpile. Okay, um, now another condition is I, I w would recommend that you identify what DEC is, okay. what the deciduous trees they really are. Okay. And then lastly, uh, you're not showing uh, any trees within 10 feet uh, outside your your uh, property line that might be affecting neighbors, and that's a requirement of the ordinance as well. Okay. Trees outside. Okay. 10 feet beyond your property line that could be neighboring trees. Okay. Does that matter if they're not gonna be anywhere near the property lines? Well, we could, for example, where the proposed pool is, um, you know, I mean, we have another one later tonight. There is like a 40-inch something that's on the right on the property line that comes within very close proximity of a pool. I believe it's a pool. And if that's the case, the root system of that tree could be affected by the construction of the pool. Right, but are they showing here it's 25.82 feet? Is that what that 25.82 is from the corner of the pool to the left? That's to the property line. Right. But if you had a 40-inch something or other out there, that you would be in the root system of your neighbor's tree, and that's, that's a concern of the ordinance. Um, Mr. Norsini, would you be comfortable if they met all those conditions um, that they could move forward? 
Yes, Mr. Chairman, I'm just making notes for the reviewer of the grading permit. So when the grading permit is reviewed, they'll make sure that all the shade tree comments are addressed, the uh, species of trees, topsoil stockpile, and the noting of the uh, trees 10 foot okay. either side of the property line. Uh, no, there's no particular concern about that. It's just the ordinance requires the species of the trees be identified. Howard, is there a chance for you to have them elongate that tree protection a little bit further? We're seeing kind of just little quarter rounds around these trees. On the north side, could they connect the 30-inch and the 30-inch poplar with tree protection around that 12-inch to kind of seal that area off and then maybe a little bit more around these two big trees to kind of seal that corner off a little bit. <clears throat> no, I'm, I'm good with that. Yeah. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Item three is six thirty seven Eagle Road. Is a representation here for 637 Eagle Road? I, I don't see Mr. Smurger, the engineer of record of the plan here. Um, just uh, if, for the board's edification, and there's not much of a narrative. Uh, it looks like they're doing some terracing in the back of the yard. And the only thing I see that um, could poss possibly be affected is the 15 inch fur. But if you look through cross section BB, which is unlabeled, but I believe it is the top one, uh, you know, they're sloping it and they're laying two to three ton boulders in. And that seems like that's right at the edge of the drip line of the tree. And there's some grading going on. And uh, they, are at, they are adding impervious surface to the site. Uh, so this this just falls under the 1500 so this will be an in-house review by doug meter and my only comment was uh, there needs to be the current tree protection fence detail as well as a note on the plan that the tree protection is required around the 15 inch fur yeah the other um, item i saw on the plan <clears throat> is uh, again there's no uh, neighbor trees identified here and they're pulling that patio right back to their border there's, there's no tree protection at all and there's no none of the trees are identified and there's a 30 inch tree in the far north uh, corner behind a newly proposed shed and we don't have any construction detail on the shed itself, what it's going in with, footer-wise, how it's going in. What kind of note, they should show some representation of the canopy of the tree, so you have an idea of the, the spread on that heritage tree. Right, and what's, what's going on with the shed? Are they just throwing it on top of the ground or digging a footer or what? <clears throat> We'll pass these on to uh, our reviewer for the grading permit, and we can have this applicant come back next month 
uh, to the Shade Tree Commission. Yeah, I would recommend that. There's also one they're tearing out just for that the water, for the water retention thing, right? They're cutting one out there. Uh, Mr. Narcini, we found one other issue that concern. There's a 39-inch uh, something or other uh, right next to the stormwater uh, retention system they have proposed there. I, see, I think he even X that out. So we'll have to get their uh, tree replacement schedule as well as um, perhaps we could talk to them about moving that Somewhere uh, else. system so we can save the canopy, save the heritage tree. Okay, so we're going to table this one for next month. All concur? Fourth item is 415 St. David's Road. Good evening. Uh, I'm John Nelson. I'm here with my wife, Barbara. We're the property owners. Okay. Um, do you have a copy of your plan? Yes, I do. Okay. okay that's a small copy. Um, do you I, I can bring mine up, Mr. Chairman, but it does have uh, some notes on it already. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do, too. I do. Well, better your notes be exposed than ours. <laughs> my comments. Okay, thanks. <laughs> okay, if you could explain what you're proposing to do here, um, and then we'll we'll add our our comments if you don't mind. Okay, sure. <clears throat> Well, we're, we're proposing to put a pool off in the, uh, angled in the yard, so it's away uh, from our existing patio. Uh, there'll be a, a, an extension patio off the pool that will connect to the current patio, uh, but the pool is angled back into the open central yard, uh, which provides uh, thought avoidance to the large second wharf that's on the side uh, between our property. The, the board really our property line kind of runs through the tree, um, which is a heritage tree in the area. The, uh, the, the equipment for the pool will be installed next to the existing garage, which is not used as a garage. That's uh, now used as a storage area for lawnmowers and bicycles. Uh, there's no driveway back to it. And um, uh, the rest of it, I think, is explained by the, the contractor and engineer on the plan. So I will do my best to answer questions if you have them. Our contractor on this is going to be uh, Anthony Sullivan. Okay. Um, the first item that, that came out uh, is, again, the tree protection is now chain link, not the standard old you know, plastic type fence. Okay. The <clears throat> second item, I suggest you bring that topsoil pile um, further, yeah, further east. Uh, okay. down much much more closely to the existing garage and get it away from the potential uh, d disturbance you're going to do to the 60 inch okay. sycamore tree
And that being a neighbor's property, um, is the neighbor aware of what you're proposing to do? No, we are going to brief them after this meeting so we had an idea what the plan issues were. So we could, if there were anything that had to be changed here, we would do that. There is an existing fence between the properties which we're going to be replacing to be compliant with the requirements for a pool fence. Okay, my last question is, what is your access plan here? I'm not quite, I think I know what it is, but I'm not sure. Well, there's an, the, the main access onto the back of the property is the existing driveway, which runs to the back of the house. It's uh, parallel to our neighbor's driveway on that side, which is 417 uh, St. David's Road, and it's going to be using that for access. Um, the contractor has indicated they're not going to be bringing trucks back in there, probably just a small backhoe to do everything. They're going to evacuate dirt or, or items as needed down the driveway uh, to, uh, to remove that, and that's included in their proposal. Uh, any cement and things like that are going to be done uh, through hoses from down the driveway because it's difficult to get any trucks back there, although a small dump truck will, but not a large one. So we do have firewood delivered there yearly without a problem down the back, but it's not for a larger project. Okay, your, this existing walk area is uh, sufficient to carry the load of small dump trucks and... Uh, the existing, well, yes, yeah, we, we've had, um, the, the area on here that's shown as an existing walk is, uh, is not, uh, it's, it's an echo paver system that we've, we've had trucks drive in with loads of wood on and, and dump material and, and remove. The, the driveway back to the house line is a paved driveway back to where we see the line right above that last maple tree there that's along the driveway. Uh, that's It's paved driveway to that point. Okay, we're... Um we're seeing small X's around the perimeter of, uh, of that pool. What do they represent? I, that I do not know. Okay. I, I'm guessing that there are elevation lines. I just want to make certain that they're not something more. Have elevation marks. I think they're. You're probably right there. I think they're elevation marks, but I don't. I, I'm not the engineer that drew this. So okay. I, I just want to make certain they're not trees. Just there are no, no, there are no trees in that entire center of yard. There's. It's a completely open space. It's the sycamore and the ones you see along that property line, along our existing patio, and then the ones that are along the driveway, and then obviously there, are, uh, three or four trees in the front yard. How, what's our scale here? Yeah, scale says as noted, but I don't see the actual scale. Is isn't that the is that a foot scale on the bottom, zero to ninety? feet how is the chance for you to get the, the tree protection to further swing around our sycamore around that big sycamore that 16 sycamore yeah I've got that suggested here as as well the oh, excuse closer me? The closer you can bring your tree protection fence to the actual pool site, the better, to get away from the 60-inch uh, sycamore. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It appears to me that the majority of the work is going to be taking place from 
want to call it the house side of the property. So that limited disturbance line, they should be able to shrink that significantly. Okay. Could we recommend anything supplemental to that tree prior to construction at Old Howard? Yeah, we could, and that's why I, I, I asked if they had yet talked to the neighbors, because uh, that truly is the neighbor's tree. Um, and if you would recommend, um, I mean, if they would suggest, okay, go forward with it, we would recommend that you do some root pruning of that and some deep fertilization, and root pruning should take place by hand, not by a mechanical backhoe. Okay. <clears throat> um, do you think John could go out to take a look at that tree for us? Would that be needed or? Um, I'm sorry, which, which tree? Yeah, the 60-inch sycamore that's a neighbor's tree. Perhaps if the arborist could go out and put a good eye on that and see you know, what its condition really is and all that good stuff. Okay, we, can, uh, we will do that. We'll instruct the arborist to review that. And uh, I guess my, my question will be if, again, from the grading permit standpoint, if we supply all this to the grading permit reviewer and they incorporate all your comments and the arborist's report on the tree is positive, they won't return to the Shade Tree Commission, but if there's an issue with that 60 inch sycamore, they'd be required to come back in June to the Shade Tree Commission. Okay, I'm good with that. Okay, we all concur. Okay, okay sir. Just an eye for the record, uh, the, our name on the plan here is misspelled, just for the township records, it's N-E-L-S-E-N. Not O N. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Yep. Okay. Fifth item is three hundred six Highland Lane. We don't have any documentation or anything. Yeah. We're the property owners. That okay. We were just told to show up, so that's not a problem. Okay, so if you could identify yourselves and then describe your project, please. Yeah, I'm Lisa Bossard. This is Emmanuel, hey. yes. my husband. Hi. And we are, we want to build um, a 700 square foot pool with a spa in our backyard. And there are, you know, two crab apple trees and then a large, I think it's an oak tree. Um, oh no, sorry, it's a maple, which is right there, the 24 inch maple. Mm -hmm. And then these, I guess, are the two uh, crab apples. And then, you know, this is our house and we have a patio here. Mm -hmm. What are the crab apples again? I'm sorry? Crab apples. Yes. Yeah. What kind of maple that is, by yeah. any chance? I didn't no. even know it was a maple. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, there's also a 30-inch maple um, yeah. as you're coming in from your existing driveway yes. as in your, your uh, line of disturbance. And it's coming very close to that. 
Um, you know, if at all possible, I would recommend they pull that closer to the house and loop it up and around and down away as much from that 30 inch maple as possible. I'm sorry, I don't understand your. Are you talking about the, the pool? Like we. No, I'm talking about your limited disturbance that's coming in from the existing driveway, which is, I'm assuming, yes. is going to be your access road yes. to yeah. the construction. Yes. It will be, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that 30 inch maple is, you know, again, it's bordering your, your neighbor, but that, that's the one I'm referring to, and mm -hmm. it's to, I guess, to the west of your property? Uh -huh. East, I'm sorry. I'm oh, sorry, what were you saying that we had to do with it? I didn't understand. If, if you could loop your limit of dis disturbance closer to the house. Okay. I don't know what that means. Uh, uh, the, lim because the limit of disturbance. Like you, see, you see where the house is and the tree that's right up the, yes. the 36 yeah. inch maple? There's a line that's around that. It's called LOD on there. Yeah. That's the line he's talking about. He's trying to get it further away from the tree. Okay. Yeah. And how does that get achieved? I just don't understand how that gets achieved. I mean, what, what are you? Oh. Oh, okay. Right, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, there's one on the other side, too. Oh, okay. Steve, you see right there, yeah. Right next to the tree. And that's the one he's talking about moving. Yeah, we, we simply did not understand the term. Yeah, I just, disturbance. yeah. Uh -huh. okay. Purpose is to keep it away from the drip line of the tree. Yeah. Okay. So you don't crush the roots. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, you know, once again, there are no neighboring trees identified within 10 feet of your property line? No. And that's a true statement. Do, do we need to get them identified? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. You uh, mean uh, the neighbor's trees? Yeah, yes. within okay. 10, 10 feet 10 of your property feet. line, the okay. ordinance requests okay. right. or requires, excuse me, that you identify okay. any trees just f mm -hmm. for the same reason you saw here yeah. earlier where there's a 60 okay. inch tree that's involved. And do we go back and tell the person, you know, we contracted with on the pool to do this? Yeah. Okay. You'll, you're going to receive a MESCO will receive communication from the person that's reviewing the grading permit uh -huh. for issues with the grading permit and they're also going to note that they're required to identify trees within 10 foot of the property line okay. that the limited disturbance must be moved okay. so they'll communicate that to your engineering oh, firm okay. to show that on the plans Okay, and just as the other earlier uh, applications tonight, your uh, tree protection fence is based on the old ordinance, not the new. And it needs to be a six foot chain link fence, not the old plastic systems. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Howard. Um, just the limited disturbance comes in off the driveway at a hard right angle between the corner of the, what I would think would be the garage and a 24 inch spruce. Mm -hmm. Are you going to be removing soil from the project? Or are they going to be taking the soil that they dig up away? Not or? all of it. Yeah, we're going to keep, I think, some of keep the, keep the some top soil. Right. Yeah. But they're going, to, they're going to haul off yeah. the rest that they dig. Uh -huh. So they're going to have to get a dump truck probably yeah. in, yes. in the back. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, it appears it's going to be pretty tight fit between the 24 inch spruce and the corner of the garage for a dump it's truck. It's actually okay because we have done a lot of construction on the house and we've had a dump truck sitting there for, I don't know, months yeah. from a project that yeah. we had going. So it's, it should yeah. be fine. Yeah. If there's enough room to get. Yes. Yeah. It's about eight I mean, feet. It's been done already. It's a pretty tight limited disturbance. It's about eight feet. One of the things I'm going to ask our reviewer to do is to possibly suggest consider rerouting around the other area of the house. That way you save damage to your driveway perhaps. And if that's where you're going to be losing the dirt from the pool, it's no harm, no foul because the, the truck, 
the ruts and, and compaction from the trucks. But then you'd need uh, tree protection fence along that uh, western side there where the 24-inch oaks, 12-inch maple, and 30-inch maple are to keep the trucks away from that area, mm -hmm. from those mm -hmm. trees. <clears throat> so you're saying go all around the other side of the house? If you were to do that, if you scale off, and, and that's, I mean, the limit of disturbance is not an exact that's not measured, right. that's not uh, surveyed on the plan, but just the way it's drawn in, when they come in off the driveway, there's a propane tank, yep. there's some air conditioning equipment, mm -hmm. and it's about, you have about eight or nine feet to get back there on a turn, and then we move the LOD so that opens up a little more when you get to the 30-inch maple, and you're still dealing with the 24-inch maple. So if, again, if, if they're gonna lose the dirt on the western side, they can come off the driveway and go around and they're just running over a lawn and there's no, mm -hmm. no worry of trees or anything. You can, you, 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 your 30 inch maple, the spruce, and it might even be a little better for the 24 inch maple and they could even stock their topsoil over there. Yeah. It's a suggestion, not yeah, a, I mean, just a suggestion, not a, oh, not a requirement. Yeah. What did we say they want to do? Okay. Um, I guess my only problem with going the going the other route is that we're going to impact that whole row of trees on the other side too, Steve. Do you know what I mean? So that's what I mean. They'd have to have the tree protection fence up, and they'd have to stay closer to the house. I mean. Uh, it, it, the only difference is it's much wider over there. You're not trying to thread the needle of eight feet between the 30-inch tree and, and the house or the air conditioning. But I think it's really six of one. And that's why it's just a suggestion. Yeah, the other concern I have is your limit of disturbance where the 24 inch maple is uh that's behind your house it's between the existing patio and the proposed pool um the limit of disturbance there is only about 10 feet and you have a 24 inch maple so your root system of that tree is really closer to your pool deck than the suggested drip line that has been planted around the center of that tree. And if what Mr. Norsini is suggesting, you may be able to get your limit of disturbance uh, you know, further uh, south of your proposed pool and reduce the limit of disturbance that comes all through that area. The only thing I would request is that um, if you could have your, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, your designer or your contractor um, identify the species of these trees, that would be very helpful. I think all of them. I mean, we do require genus and species in the ordinance period. Yes. Mr. Chairman, do you or do you require these folks to come back, or are you okay going through the graining permit process with your comments? I'm fine with it going through if the commission is, if they meet all the conditions we've just set. Yep. Okay, all in occurrence. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay, thank Thanks. you. Can we keep this or do you? It's okay. Thank you.
Okay. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, six on the agenda, 601 Brookside. Okay, then if you could identify yourself and explain your project. Uh, good evening, I'm Matthew Palino, I'm here on behalf of the applicant. And um, the project it, um, entails uh, building a new home and the location of an existing tennis court. And of course the improvements that go along with the new home driveway, sewer connections, all that kind of stuff. Um, Mr. Chairman, if I may, there's one note on the applicant's plan where they're requesting that uh, the trees within the sanitary sewer easement don't count for compensatory trees. Right. Uh, but w what I will tell you is, as a rule, trees and sewers don't go together, but subs conversely, we don't clear cut our easements. So we have many, many easements throughout the township that are treed, and I, I, I would recommend to this board that those trees do count in the tree in the uh, compensatory tree table. Yeah, I saw that, and I agree. I, that that line should be struck. Um. Uh, you two seem to have a tree uh, that is predominantly in your neighbor's property. We're on the second page. Yes. And you, it's within 10 feet you know, the grading, we know that to, in order to do, it, do the foundation for a structure like this, that you're going to be, pardon? This is the pre-I-22? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Correct. There's already an existing retaining wall there, and the tree is on the other side of that retaining wall on the high side. Okay, do we know how deep the root system is of the, the retaining wall? I mean, uh, the footing the, is? I'm sorry. Well, I can tell you the retaining wall is about four or five feet. I, I don't know. Obviously, we haven't excavated there. It's a retaining wall that's been there. The tennis court looks like it's 30, 40 years old. Okay. Um, so the if it was a three-foot footing, you know, you're talking we're seven feet deep. Um, I would think the, the footing has to be a couple feet just for the height of the retaining wall. The retaining wall is pretty high. They don't, they don't seem to show that retaining wall in your existing conditions. It should be. Yeah. There's not much, not mention of it on that page.
Are you going to keep the existing retaining wall or are you going to rebuild it? Um, the existing retaining wall stays along the two properties. There's a section in back where it's going to be pushed back a little further running. Let me go back to page two. But is that where that tree is? Okay. No, the piece of the wall. Let's see if it's shown better on another page, but it's back here where the retaining wall would be pushed back. The one that's been, the one that's between the, next to the tree and where the house is going to be, that wall is going to stay the same? If it were if it were here, your grade lines would be changing, but they're not on these your existing conditions. Excuse me. Your grade lines would be changing if there's a retaining wall there in your existing no, conditions. Not showing it, but I know. I really know there's a retaining wall. There. Right, I know, but your grade lines don't change either. So. At the at the bottom of the tennis court, it does say stone wall. Mm -hmm. See that? It comes around the whole thing, but that's not the same place as where the other one is. It's definitely closer. And you see the great thing is here, where so he is moving the retaining wall back. Closer to the property line. To the, yeah. to the tree is really the question. Yeah. Do you have that construction detail on that retaining wall construction? Some on page four, I have some detail. Typical retaining wall construction. Foot plus a, a one foot, a so one foot kicker. Yeah. So it would be three foot plus this, which is three, three, plus it's, three, it's three plus your overdig on either side. Three. So it's actually going to be like five okay. foot wide trench to put that footer in. I got you. <coughs> so if that's the case, let's get close to those trees. So that big tree, that 33 inch elm? Yeah, it's going to be, it would be like cut, cut right to the back side right there. Yeah. Okay, I think we need to clarify this retaining wall issue. It's it's very confusing to us, and it does look like it could have impact on. Well, I think it's, it's it is actually clear that the existing retaining walls over here is showing a new one <coughs> with that detail. Um, it, it does appear that it's just what it appears like it's close to the tray. Yes. I think it could probably be um, around it in some way because if I'm looking at the grades. Um, right here, we're, we're calling for a 349 on the low side of the wall and a top of the wall of 351, which is actually two and a half feet. We could uh, change that to just a boulder wall. I think, I think the township's okay. Steve? Yes, sir. Um, from the township side, you're okay if even we're up to four feet with just a, 
uh, like a boulder kind of wall? Four feet and above has to be an engineered wall. Right, so this is two and a half feet. So, so we wouldn't even need to. Um, that would be looked at again on the grading permit side, on the grading permit review. This, this specific one will be done by Roger Phillips, our township engineer, because of the impervious surface. So the, this gets a different look for really for stormwater. But there's other actual concerns from the grading permit review with where the utilities are going and the sewer, sanitary sewer easement. But yeah, four, four foot is the limit. Four foot and below is the limit for an unengineered wall. So that could actually be changed that, that rod to a um, less intrusive wall. Right. Well, it wouldn't have to get that close, but it's definitely, um, you, could move the a little bit you know, you could probably get it, um, in that area, you could probably keep it like four feet off the house or something. <coughs> um, far is it now? Well, that side yard setback is, I think, 15 feet. So, um, the retaining wall looks like it's around 12. <clears throat> so you can like put a little bump on the retaining wall to go around the roots of that yeah, tree? In fact, in a, yes, and it wouldn't even have to be a, um, a retaining wall that would re require like a footing like that. It could just be, because it's only two and a half feet, it could literally just be uh, boulders on top. So you would, I could see it getting, you know, I think we could build the retaining wall about four feet off the house. Theoretically, to put the house in, we're going to dig three foot of over dig anyway. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you're, there's no way we're not yeah okay so right there because the retaining wall is actually so shallow that could be i think changed to um just a dry you know mm -hmm. above ground wall and back however the elevations are going to be steeper and i think it would require an engineered wall okay back here well that's all right there's nothing no big trees back there no um just saying so Okay, out of your proposed driveway entrance, there is a 29-inch poplar that's within 10 feet of the proposed driveway. Um, excavation for that driveway is going to be in big time of the canopy or the root system of that tree. There's a 29-inch cherry uh, down in the 353, uh, and a 23-inch poplar down in the 354 grade ranges, close to the dead tree. And they're going to be impacted significantly. You've got a grade change in 351 that's coming right into an 18-inch ash. And every single word of grade change is going down that side of the elm. I don't see a tree on the property. That's good. Mr. Chairman, um, usually the grading permit review is not completed until after they hear from Shade Tree Commission. But uh, on the grading permit side, I have some real concerns with the utilities crossing through the sanitary sewer easement. So I guess what I'm getting to is uh, I would like to request that the applicant come back next month after the first review letter is uh, put forth end with your comments and if there's any changes needed due to the grading permit the board can view it then because there seems to be quite a few conflicts um, with the way this is set up at this point in time yeah I concur this this submission is is troubling from a shade tree point of view um, I, I believe there's going to be a lot more trees affected than what is being suggested here. 
So let's go through your process uh, and see how that those issues are resolved. And uh, with the comments we made tonight about we, the trees that we're concerned about, um, we'd for see if Mary Ann's sake, could we just run through those trees again real quick, the specifics, <coughs> other than the ones that are, I mean, obviously the ones that are to be removed. Okay, again, <coughs> the 33-inch elm, the 40-inch poplar, is that in play? Yeah, the, uh, there's a 29-inch cherry, 23-inch poplar. Uh, a 29-inch poplar at the driveway. Once uh, the 40-inch poplar is that this tree over here you were talking about, yes. Steve? Yes, sir. Okay, and there was what was the comment on that one? Just so I know when I address it. We're just wondering, you know, what the change from a tennis court to a lawn is going to make is going to have an effect on that poplar. Is that retaining while remaining the same? Yeah. Okay, it's just so I know. I didn't, I didn't hear, I don't remember talking about that one, that's why. Okay, and there's also a 22 inch poplar to the east of the, uh, the house, right almost to the east of the garage. On the property line, is that the It's one? just barely, yeah, it's kind of sharing the property line. That, that's a point right there, Steve, is that tree a shared tree? Where was the cherry tree? I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the cherry tree is at the 353 grade change line. Um, Got it. Thank you. Okay, Marion, you good with all that? Yes. Okay, yeah, and then we do have a concern as to where the utilities are running, even if they do um, relocate the driveway by some magic, they're all very close to uh, that 29-inch poplar as well. I also have a concern, Steve, with the neighbor's 36-inch maple on the south side, far south corner. <clears throat> in uh, its proximity to that retaining wall in that corner of property. From the re, when we revisit these issues with the engineer, um, the trees that you're mentioning that we're showing as staying, um, this site is quite limiting in where we can go with the sanitary easement. And um, I don't know if the approach is if in fault we find we really can't shift stuff much and we're coming back here basically. I mean, maybe there's things we can regrade, things like that. Um, are, you, are you looking for compensation for those trees? Would you prefer we show them being removed? Um, for instance, like the 29 inch poplar. Um, I don't think there's anywhere we're putting the driveway that doesn't, you know, we could go over three, four more feet, but it's well, like the, the 29. We can show it leaving. We can show the tree coming down and giving compensation for it. But when we're 20 feet or, or 15 feet from a tree, we typically don't do that. But uh, I'm trying to get a read is what you're looking for. We I know there's big trees on the site, and I know it's a small site, and we're working there. So um, just. The fact that you have a comment that you guys see it and you're concerned, I understand and respect that, but I'm looking to see, um, you know, what it is you think you're 
what you think would be more appropriate to remove the tree and replace it or um, now I realize there might be some things we can alter to less impact a tree but when we we're some of these things I already have a feeling um, based on where the sanitary sewer easement is on the property that it'll be tough to do a whole lot with the driveway I think we can do some things with the retaining wall although I don't think we're going to get um, out of the trip line and um, you know what, what I would of suggest the, is of this, um, yeah, 33 inch elm, I mean, my guess is that probably comes it's going to come halfway over the house <laughs> yeah. why don't you wait to the review letter on the grading permit and then if you have to make some changes because like, you know like the I see what the 353 contour line uh, daylights at the trunk of the tree so you may have some changes based on the the review letter so either you if you can't if that grade needs to stay you're going to end up showing that tree being removed and that's or, and right that's okay. or it may be why don't you let the, the permit let the review letter come to you and when you're sitting with your engineer at that point you might be making some changes because i'm going to be honest one of my comments is going to be there's nothing to do with this committee is that the uh, utilities can't cross through the sanitary sewer easement like that so they may have to go out the front yard and that may may or may not make a difference as to what goes on but uh, then when you get that review letter you can do one sitting with your engineer take a look at all this and then if you right. still see that that grading line goes through there when you come back you show the compensatory planning uh, I'm, I'm good with that, but I mean, I think I can look right now, and if you're referring to the gas electric water, I think I know right now we can relocate them and not have to go through the sanitary sewer easement. I think that was just the engineer showed them. Um, but they could just hug, they could be within the um, 10 feet line and miss the sanitary sewer easement. So, right. I mean, it's going to push your stormwater management system over. That shouldn't affect anything. No, yeah. I mean, uh, so I mean there's room there for that that's not we're talking you know we're talking about two inch um, conduits and stuff when it's not a massive excavation there's room for those to not cross the sanitary sewer easement right um, now if there's a different problem you're seeing that you think may well uh, that's once that review gets done I mean this is just I'm looking at it with my tree hat on I just happened yeah. to pick it up because I had my sewer hat on for a minute so uh, I, I think we should let that review go through, and I, I think it'll be quicker and easier for you in the end to look at the whole thing. Okay. Well, like I said, um, so there's really no then definitive approach you guys are minimize what we can, and then if you think um, if we think it's going to be, um, I mean, is there a rule of thumb like if we're so much into the drip line, you might as well show it coming down. I mean, that's sort of the guidance I'm looking from you guys is there something you're looking at saying gee that tree is not going to survive um, and yeah I mean being within 10 feet of a 29 inch poplar um, in my mind and I refer to the arborists but in my mind you're you're shooting that tree dead. I mean, so then the board would prefer we show that coming down. That's yeah. what I'm getting at. Yeah. Okay. Well, <clears throat> the major problem with the plan as it is that you're going to be impacting every single tree on this lot. Ah. Uh, with a good either, bit of it. Yeah, it's a small it, lot. Right. Sure. So. Yeah. And three of them, as I see it, aren't your trees. So. That's my problem with this plan. You're going to kill the rest of the trees that you have here with these grade lines that you have cherry poplar ash but that's on you you're going to be into the three neighbors trees as this plan is now and I don't I don't know how you're going to get around that so so you're then that's one piece of advice is obviously show the least impact to the neighboring trees as we get yep and it um well then we'll wait for steve's or the engineering department yeah. review it yeah i think that's the first step okay, okay sir uh, 
Okay, the seventh is 299 Harris Lane, a two lot subdivision. Good evening. I'm Scott Emerson on behalf of the applicant uh, with Bentley Homes and uh, the applicant um, for Crow Investment Properties <clears throat> for this subdivision. Uh, what we have here is a 4.3 plus acre property which we had submitted to the township for a subdivision. Uh, we're proposing two lots on this property. It's located off of Bidoff Road, Gulf Creek Road, Hares Lane, King of Prussia Road area. The board's familiar with that. Um, on the <clears throat> Hares Lane, uh, New Hares Lane is the access point. And if you're familiar with the Hartford Dog Park, which is on the opposite side of the property, um, just to familiarize yourself with the area. Okay, now I would ask that you. Um you know, explain this as clearly as you pot. This is the first time we have seen this. Sure. Um, what, what we've proposed here is on this property itself, it's, as I said, it's 4.3 plus acre property. We're proposing to subdivide into two single family lots. Um, this property is located in the R1 zoning district. Uh, these are interior lots and we meet all the criteria for that district. What we're proposing <clears throat> to have um, on lot stormwater on lot septic, on lot wells. Uh, there's no public utilities within, this, within the area for us to connect to. Um, with that, we're going to be gaining access through New Hares Lane. <coughs> off of King of Prussia Road. Down the access point into the two lots. The other access onto Bidoff Road, which would be lot two, is unaccessible. It's, uh, extremely steep and narrow, so that's basically not a, an, a viable option for entry. Um, what we're proposing is, is the driveway connection point for the two lots. We'll be having a couple of pull-offs within the driveways themselves, servicing the two homes. You own that, you own the right away out to the, where you have the pull-offs and all that? It's on your property, or is you have like an easement on somebody else's, or what? No, it's on our property. Mm -hmm. Now, to the to uh, date, we have yet to receive a review letter from the township engineer, um, so we're awaiting his comments. But while we're here, we'd also like to uh, get some input from the board. Okay. We, uh, excuse me, if I may address the applicant. It's um, Mr. Bentley's attorney did speak with our engineer. You'll have that, your letter today or Friday at the latest. I'm sorry, tomorrow or Friday at the latest, okay. as, as we told Mr. Brosman. Uh, I do have some questions for you on this. I, am I wrong in that uh, I'm not seeing the tree, uh, the listing of trees to be removed and the, and the compensatory plantings and- No, uh, and uh, the, reason, the reason being is this was the blush of the uh, application that we had submitted. Um, we obviously are gonna be making some revisions based on some stormwater management um, we've actually had some conversations with the neighbors, so we're going to be modifying the plan. We're going to be modifying slightly the entry, um, but we understand the board's concerns about the trees and the saving the trees and what we can do for that. Um, but <clears throat> because we haven't received a review letter yet, we just want to get the comments so we can address them all in one, at one time. And I'm not to try to, not to be bureaucratic, but based on the review letter, you may be back again depending what that is. And like I say, you'll have that by no later than the end of this week. We understand. I, I, I just have, there's quite a few heritage trees that you're showing to be removed. Uh, um, in the plan itself, what I've done, you can, you can see highlighted in the areas based on the township ordinances on the size, uh, the six to 18 is marked in orange, 19 to 29 is marked in green, 30 inch plus is marked in yellow. Two of those heritage trees are actually dead. Um, but what we're going to be doing is looking at ways that we can enter the property, gain access to lot two, without having to impact the heritage trees as best we can. And one of the things that will help, 
I mean, you have your existing conditions plans, which shows the trees to be removed, and that's great. But on your grading and utilities plan, where you show those finished contours, um, you should show the trees to be removed. That'll help this commission see where these contours are daylighting. And also, your tree canopies have no scale in relation to them, so in, in relationship to themselves. So a 30-inch tree shows the same canopy as a six-inch tree. Not saying that you have to physically survey and scale them off, but again, for this commission to take a look, if it's a quarter-inch circle is a 30-inch tree and a quarter-inch circle is a six-inch tree, it's hard for them and myself to really get a look at what the impact may be of those finished contours. I understand. Um, based on some of the comments that came earlier from uh, the uh, applicants in front of us, I got that as a concern. We'll have that noted on the plans. Do you have a utility easement down the Bidolf Road? There is an existing uh, easement for electric. Not for sewer. It's not a sewered area. It's on. It's on site septic. Everything's on site. Oh, everything's on site. Yeah, my, my best guess at this point is it is a subdivision um, and needs to go through you know, some more of the engineering processes and it's very difficult for us to make any reasonable projections as to what's really going to be impact. I mean, I'm looking, <clears throat> there is a There's a row of spruce trees to the northeast, or excuse me, northwest of the property, the back property line. Yes. And then you go to the grading utilities plan, and there's an infiltration berm and it looks like you're right into that row of spruce trees that's not showing up as as removals uh, there's a lot of uncertain unknowns i guess is a better way to say it right we were aware of that and actually we as i mentioned there had been meetings with the neighbors uh downstream from us uh as the crow flies and what we are going to be doing is addressing some of their concerns which which um addresses the concerns specifically with uh stormwater in addition to the fact we have talked to our engineer. We do have the ability to uh, modify that basin, so we're not going to be impacting that area. So it's, it's something that we're going to be showing on the uh, uh, next rendition uh, coming back to the township. Can you tell me how many trees you're showing now to be removed? Uh, I don't think that number's on here, is it? Uh, I think if, as the plan sits, I think there was approximately, f well, I'm going to say it's uh, about 15, but we're, this allay of trees is a little bit difficult to count. That we'd have to get the actual specific amount. Um, we do have the count for the total, but that has to be overlaid on the plans. And again, um, I'm hesitant to tell you how many trees we're taking out because we're going to be modifying the plan. So when yeah. those changes come back, that's when the, the real list will be noted on the plans. Those are like clover leaf figures. Those are trees to be removed. The ones you have with the orange, are the ones you have highlighted in the colors here, are those all removals? These just... How do you tell removals on, on the, what symbol? There's no removals on here. Okay. That, that's, that's what Steve was getting at, is oh, that okay. we, we don't have the removal shown okay. um, as we're going to be coming back with changes. Okay, well, thank you. I think this is basically an introductory meeting and... Um, there is one question, though, that was brought, and uh, I, I forgot to mention it. Uh, 
if anybody's familiar with the property, the lay of spruce trees along the uh, eastern border of the property, it's in pretty rough shape. And um, we're looking to kind of get some input. I don't know if the township's been out there, uh, any of the members to, you know, take a look at it. I mean, there's obviously a lot of trees there, but they're uh, grown together, and some of them are dead. Um, if, if we're going to have an opportunity to have one, somebody come out and give an assessment. Okay. We, if, if you, I mean, if you're going to have an arborist, and you had noted, like, that one of the heritage trees was dead, so that makes a difference when you're doing your tree replacement. So if you have an arborist that's going to verify that, and that's going to be part, you know, when the plan comes in with your table, and if you want your arborist to do so, we can have the township arborist go out and review it. That's not a problem. Or you can have your arborist go out and take a look at that. But if you have some dead heritage trees, you're definitely going to want to have that documented because that's a big difference between taking down a tree for a utility or the corner of a house versus one that's already hazardous. Right. Okay. Okay. We'll see you next month. Okay. Thanks again. Okay. Moving on to the hazardous tree reports. Um, there is the first item is 102 Arbor Place. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may, I'll, I'll, I'll introduce uh, uh, our residents. W what has occurred? Um, they did some tree removal in their backyard. Uh, John Hotsback, the township arborist, did uh, review the site, met with the residents, and based on his assessment of what trees were removed, uh, in his report, it was noted there were 19 compensatory tree plantings required, and I believe Mr. Morgan had stated you're willing to do five. Yeah. And the reason he's here tonight, and not to put words in your mouth, is to talk to the Shade Tree Commission about that difference of 19 and 5. Yes. Um, I don't know if you guys can see this, but zoom in. On if you put it out further in the center of the table, they may be able to zoom in on it. Okay. So basically, of the 24 trees, 19 of them were white pines, which is an undesirable, dangerous tree in our opinion. They were all very close to the house. Um, we just bought the house in September. Uh, we only lived there a little while. We had some renovations done and then this was the next thing on our list. Uh, if I would have known about all these rules beforehand, I may not have bought the house, but I didn't know about the rules. Uh, the tree company didn't know we were in Radnor Township, so that's why the job was begun. So then we were here last month um, kind of talking about this and it's our feeling that these dangerous white pines shouldn't require replacement. So those 19, I haven't proposed any replacement for that. Of the other trees, um, there was a total of four, so the ones highlighted in green here, two for this ginkgo, and this is what John suggested, uh, one for this birch and one for this crab apple. And based on the replacement schedule for the size of those three would be five trees requiring, I think, two to be large canopy. So what I'd like to do is plant five large canopy trees as a uh, viable replacement for this. John, can you help us out? Sure. Um, we did a hazard study based on, okay. I call it over. Sorry, people at home have to hear you. That's fine now. <laughs> I did a tree study based on Rick's Tree Experts um, program and map that they put together. I went out, looked at these trees, um, the pines that I put as. Can you actually go back to that? Yeah, sorry. I got your report too if you want to yep. pull that up, but this um, is if, kind of yep. mirroring it. Correct. If you see the ones that are in either fair, good um, condition based on the white pines, we actually gave a compensatory replacement for those actual trees. And that's where the 19 is coming from. Yep. Yep. Unknown is because the tree was removed prior to me coming. Yes. 
just a stump. Yeah. The ones that were left that did have, like, number three, see where it says stump decay? Okay, that was prevalent. So then I give a zero rating for that tree. Okay. Yep. But the other ones were unknown, sound wood. Um, I did try to match up some of the logs that were left on site. Um, I didn't want to spend hours there on Radner's dime. So there were solid wood in a lot of those stumps left. The rest of the tree, you know, again, is unknown. I had, uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may, I, uh, in speaking to the Morgans, I had informed them that, uh, and we actually spoke about this at the last shade tree meeting. Um, so right now we have the township arborist that is putting forth that the 19 compensatory trees are required and uh, Mr. Morgan's offering five. So obviously there's 14 trees in the balance and whatever this, to, this commission decides, the Morgans have the right and I, I think we're already kind of geared up to go to the Board of Commissioners to appeal this. So I, I have you tentatively on my agenda list for the, the board meeting should, should that so go. Yeah, I mean, I physically don't have the space to plant 19 trees. I do to plant five, and I will ensure that those five are large canopy trees, which I understand are the most desirable. Um, uh, yeah, Mr. Morgan, did did you go out for bid for this this job, or did you just pick Ricks and go? Uh, I had two other companies come out and give me quotes. Okay, did I, uh, those two other companies say anything about the shade tree ordinance? No. Um, were those companies licensed in Radnor? I believe so. I, licensed companies, you've seen signs around, yeah. Yeah, I Googled, made some calls, got a, got a good price. Huh? Uh, I'd have I don't to, I'd have to, to look that. it up. Yeah, and I don't so. wanna, that, I, I don't The issue with Rick's is, uh, the Morgans live in Arbor Place, which is right across almost from Ethan Elementary School. So the mix up in not being from Radnor, not from your folks situation, Again, but from Rick's, I'll be addressing Rick's on that. Existed, you know, in, in the country, let alone in this township, you know, to this level of specificity, you know, and I, and I apologize for all of this happening, but my main concern is the safety of my family. You know, I have a son with special needs. And, and having a yard will help him have a good quality of life. And I cannot afford to pay you $500 a tree, and it doesn't cost $500 to plant a tree. So that's a separate issue, but I don't feel I should be responsible for those 14. So if you'll accept the five, that would make us very happy. Thoughts? What was the other, you, there was another sheet, was that a property? This was my uh, artwork. Now, is that the, the shape of the property? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so our, our, the road is here in the front, the driveway goes up this way. The red trees were removed, you can see there all the, you can kind of see the shadow of the house in the middle, I just pulled it off of Google Maps. All the whites are what are remaining, and then the greens, one here in the front and four over here, are my proposed replacements. You know, it's not to scale, it's not professional. I just put it together to try my best to, to give you guys something. You know, I, I read about these trees and how far apart they need to be, so I wanna make sure all that's correct. You know, but I have, I have space for the five, you know, and, I, and I'll make sure that they're all, all large canopy trees, probably, you know, oak trees. Yes, for our thoughts or? Well, uh, you know, I, I think white pine's got a bad rap. I mean, they're, they're not trees that fall apart with the slightest storm. I mean, they, they are probably the, a little bit, uh, Jim, you can speak to this more, but I mean, I, even though they're, let's say, not the strongest trees, they're, you know, they're, they're not dangerous if they're in good shape and, uh, you know, uh, well-maintained, uh, except in a, they're not just, they just don't fall down in the slightest storm. That's what Rick's Tree Company said that in their report that I read. Uh, something well, even about before they, they said that at all, we, we just felt unsafe. So they dropped branches. They dropped branches and too, and they weren't maintained have. for 30 years with the staff. previous I've watched two. owner. One fell down right before we moved in. They, they do when we get bad storms. I mean, I. I see them swaying. I see branches falling right outside of my children's windows. 
they seemed very hazardous to me and that's my feeling and that's my child and my children and my home and they were on top of my home that's just very very unsettling I've watched them fall on our neighbor's deck like I said since we moved in she's very upset about them she feels they're dangerous they're they just seem very they don't seem sturdy to us what I'm talking about here is the, how the Commission looks at these trees is replaceable and, and their value is as uh, when they're taken down without authorization as a replacement to disregard replacing them I'm not sure it's consistent with you know how we view the value of those trees yeah <clears throat> now white pine is a, a soft wood I mean it's it's not an oak it's not a maple right um, white pine is known for its winter storm damage that's its biggest problem when you have significant wet snows or ice um, they do tend to fall apart um, so I don't consider white pine the most valuable tree um, I think in my mind the biggest issue is the Rick's tree uh, service as a licensed arborist in Radnor Township did not inform you that you know there is an ordinance that you need to talk about and what what I would prefer is that uh, in essence they get the rap not necessarily you um, Mr. And Chairman the, if I may just to give you the background we stopped Rick's trees they were the identif unidentified I, I didn't mean to interrupt but I, I want to make sure everybody has a full story and, and, and the so the Morgans were informed that this is your property and you can remove trees there's no law that says you can't remove the trees if you remove these trees we have a shade tree ordinance that you have to follow so mr. Morgan then decided to to remove these trees after we stopped him he's aware of the ordinance and he's coming to this board saying okay I made this decision as mrs. Morgan said they were very um, did not feel comfortable with those trees so there was a clear decision made after that but mr. Morgan said I, I am going to remove these trees and I will go back to this board and appeal and if necessary appeal further to the Board of Commissioners so there is definitely fault on Rick's tree service I think for not letting the Morgans know the first time that we have this ordinance and I think that was a blind side to them but when the rest of the work continued everybody was fully aware of, of the ordinance is not Rick's tree responsible for coming to us if they think that there are hazardous trees that need to be taken down immediately there is the in the ordinance there is the emergency tree provision so if a tree is deemed an emergency you take it down and then you come back to me within a week and we process it the hazardous tree is as we do now we get the hazardous tree reports but since we've had the township arborist on board our independent arborist confirms or evaluates what the uh, tree companies provide as hazardous trees our arborist did go out and do that and I, I think there's a disparity between what Rick's tree service said was hazardous which I think was everything and and what our arborist has put forth just to lay the groundwork I think there's a lot of pieces in motion here understood just at the onset of this project did the representative or surfer arborist from Rick's tree service deem any of your trees as an eminent hazard to you or your house at that time before the project started not officially no but I walked around with him just at that they, I mean did he say like, oh my god I, well, I mean did he riches. say did he say to you, this is an eminent hazard that is going to fall on top of your house tonight for some of the trees yeah, I think he used that actual really language felt, yeah. then the rest of them just the proximity to the house alone Striking. You know, but I walked him around and showed him the trees, and every single one, he was like, "Oh yeah." There was a huge sweet gum that had already dropped a branch that he definitely made that comment about. How long after did you talk with him? Did the actual work begin? Two weeks. No, the initial talk. You mean when they came out? You mean he came out and told you you have eminent hazards at the house? Uh, a month and, later. 
I okay. mean, what didn't happen right away. Well, yeah, we had to get on their I schedule. Think we had to get on their schedule for a few weeks. Maybe we went away on vacation and came home over our kids' spring break and it started. So, right. I mean, it was definitely yeah. like a few weeks it lagged. So, what I'm getting at is the eminent hazard is you have to get out of your house and we have to take I it down understand today. That we talked about well, that at the last meeting. I don't know that we meeting. necessarily felt we had to evacuate. We lived there for two home. months. I mean, we lived there and feeling uncomfortable. Feeling uncomfortable. Well, that, right. But I didn't that's, that. that's what I'm trying to get at to the, how we got to that point. Yeah. If I understand. These trees were deemed an eminent hazard at that point. Then the next step would have been the next day or so, they would have been taken down for your safety. Right. <clears throat> not That's to, not at the not far end of the spectrum. Not to wait a month later to to, to take the trees down because they are so dangerous to your property. So that's the crux of things that we're what we're trying to evaluate right now. Okay. The difference between being an eminent hazard, something that's going to come out of the ground that we have to come that night or we can wait a month to take that down. Can you go back to that list? I Which, just have a question, I guess, for yeah. John on that one. Yeah. There's a lot of poor, mm -hmm. there's a lot of dead, mm -hmm. and then there's some fares. Mm -hmm. Is fares considered a hazard tree? I mean, of this rating, what are hazards, what are eminent, what are fine? The dead and the poor are hazards. I'm sorry? The dead and the poor are rated as hazards. Are hazards, yes, okay. Correct. And that's in the actual um, text of the report. Okay. Yep. I, I didn't see the report. So, fair is, is that a good tree or is that, do you have a good fair, or? Con fair condition, meaning that it has low live crown ratio. These trees are planted in plantation style form, which is that entire street yeah. made up of. No, I know. So, they have no understory, okay? And the only the top crown is alive in layman's terms. Okay, so they're really not bad, in that great right? of shape either. None of the trees are good shape, you're fine, leave them alone type of thing. They're fair shape, yeah. Where it says fair, they're fair. Fair's okay. Correct. Four and okay. dead, yeah. Okay. Just trying to understand. Yep. Now, at this point, you have no trees left on the property, right? Is that... No, I have no, dozens. All those. Okay. The white ones. But, okay, so how many were removed um, immediately and how many were removed after you were aware of our... Uh, there was seven the first day of the project they took down seven they cut the top off of the eighth so that stick stood there for a few weeks too while we were negotiating all of this and that was dangerous in itself um, so a total of eight and John's report says eight were either removed or in the process of being removed then I talked to Steve several times I talked to Elaine Schaefer I've talked to I even left you a message Howard one day you know, I, we were very uncomfortable. We still are. We were very scared. Well, we're not really now because the trees are gone. Sure. But this whole process was, just blew our minds. You know, we want to make this right, but I can't do 19. I can't afford the $500, which Elaine actually indicated isn't the replacement cost and that the fee schedule for this year wasn't set. And I went out and priced some trees, and none of them were over $100. So that, That's based on labor rates as well. Right, yes. well. And overhead and burden and all that stuff. Right. So, Excuse me, sir. Can I just finish? Uh, the question I was going to ask was, how many did you remove after you were aware of the ordinance? Eight. So there was eight down, 24 total. 24. So you removed another 16 after you were aware of the ordinance. Right. Um, the, I, uh, the, all the ones that you have what are showing, the red ones are the ones you took down, the white ones are the ones that are existing. Right. And you show the uh, five uh, in green of where you plan to put uh, replacement canopy trees. Um, you say that the the bottom of the, the the picture is the front road. Is that correct? Yeah. Yep. The driveway comes up this side here. Are these accurate property lines? Because a lot of these trees that you're showing on white right there look to be your neighbor's trees. There's even more than that. Okay. So I just put the ones that were either on. Sure. My, I mean, I tried to ballpark it as good as I can. There's another dozen small spruces right here. Can, can we just go back to the page of the the other page there? The that one. Yeah. Yep. So, if we were to take out the eight trees that you cut down when you didn't know, which that's is the unknown. Yep. That's one through eight. What's that bring our compensatory number to? There's only one, two, three, four fair trees. Five, six fair trees. One through eight. Yeah. Two, four, six, seven, eight. Based on John's recommendation. Sure. 
there was no evidence of decay in any of the trees looked at other than number three. Right. Three and seven say stump decay. Yeah. Yes, we can Yeah, what's a what's a hazardous tree require or is recommended? Replacement. Replacement for a hazardous tree. For what size? Six to eighteen is one, eighteen and up is two, and then anything over heritage trees is six trees or the even for a, a hazardous tree. I didn't think that was I you're asking for a hazardous tree. Yes. Oh none. Yeah. I'm sorry. None. Yeah. Zero for hazardous. Okay, so based on this, he took out a bunch of hazardous trees except for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven fair trees. Correct. After he knew the ordinance. Correct. One through eight were done prior to my yep. inspection. Yep. So there's eight trees. Mr. At, Mr. Hospice's compensatory recommendation was based on this was the taken out of the before he knew what the ordinance was. So, then, well, I'm looking at one, two, three, four. Eleven. John, oh, okay, that's a fair and a, okay. The difference, are oh, you coming over here? I'm just trying to understand how this all works. So this fair says 20 inches and it's two trees. Okay, fair, Correct. two trees there. Correct, okay, okay, I exactly, you. yep. All right, 13, and you're looking at the sizes here? Correct, or? that's okay. what it's based on the ordinance, yep. Okay, I got but you. Where, where they were actually dead or hazard, poor condition, right. they got a zero. I got yep. you, okay. This is his, the last column is yours, right, Drew? Yeah, I basically yeah. Okay, just I got you. summarized okay. yours to I try to you. fit it on one page. Yeah, the last column is what I'm proposing. Right. So after John came out, you understood what the ordinance was. Right. So you knew what you were doing. I knew what the ordinance was before John came out because I talked to Steve several times. Right. You, you, but I'm st I still yeah. was. So you knew what the ordinance was after the eight trees where you didn't know. Right. John came out and looked at them. Right. Then you knew what the ordinance was. So you right. knew what the compensatory tree plans could be if you right. took the rest of the trees down. So after that, I talked to John when he came out. I was there that day. Right. So we walked around too. Okay. And right. then I waited for his report, which he sent to Steve and I the following day. I read that report, saw the 19, didn't feel that was reasonable. So I spoke to Elaine Schaefer, explained the situation. That was the second time I had spoken to her. Explained the situation, the danger to my family, et cetera, et cetera. She said, you should go ahead and remove the rest of the trees, and then we'll figure this out with the Shade Tree Commission. Because the reality of it is, what we, uh, we told, I sent an email so, that Sunday to Mr. Morgan. A homeowner has the right to remove trees on their property. Nobody could, we're, we're not, Right. overreaching and yeah. saying you can't do this work but my email was very plain in saying you have the right to remove that but the shade tree ordinance when you do remove X amount of trees kicks in along with compensatory plantings and I so, uh, so that's where we stood you know Mr. Morgan said I am going to remove these trees as it he knows the ordinance so now he's here coming to this shade tree commission saying you know I'm offering this I feel this is not uh, proper, and that's that's where it comes to you folks to make a decision on what you feel the compensatory planning should be. If Mr. Morgan is okay with that decision, it ends here. If it does not, he would come to the Board of Commissioners for an appeal, as it states in in our ordinance. Right. And one more comment I'll make too. Right in the replacement 
tree list you guys have, it specifically says white pines should not be planted near buildings. They're an undesirable tree. They drop branches, et cetera, et cetera. So in your own literature, it's saying those things. Yeah, it's... It, I don't it, feel that I should it, be it's, responsible it's, for It's the there, pines. but if we have everybody going around the township cutting down all the white pines... Yeah, I understand. Just because they're white pines, the then, and don't have any compensatory tree plant, then... Right. Then why would, then, would we... Why Usually that's developers. And right, so there's no point of us sitting here. Right. So that's at the crux of what we're trying to okay. work on right now. Can you go back to the picture, the, the illustration that you had? Sure. Um, why, do you, uh, why are you planting your new trees way back along the back? Why wouldn't you plant some of them in the front? There's not a lot of room. There's a maple here and a maple here, and I'm trying to have grass there. And the most open space is this, this space between my neighbor. So to provide privacy, it's just a more desirable location. I'm willing to modify that, though. I just can't increase the number or afford the compensatory dollar figure. You can't increase the number, huh? <clears throat> not really. There's really not room. The existing trees, too, I mean, it, it wouldn't give these trees enough room to thrive, I don't think. What are the, what are the, I, I'm an electrical engineer, not an arborist, no. okay? <laughs> Just to okay. be clear here. Um, the two trees that are in the front yard there, uh, what are they? The two whites here and here are both, I think they're maples with a red, a burgundy red leaf. I don't know. There's a crab apple out there that was. Did that get removed? That came down. I'm gonna, that's where I'm planning to put the replacement. Yeah. But what are those two trees out front? Any particular kind? We didn't look at those because they weren't part. Of, I didn't inspect those. I just know. I, I remember seeing maples. We didn't inspect them because they weren't part of the list. Yeah, because they're not. They're still there. <laughs> they're like eight inches, I think. Six to eight inches, probably. They're not. I think they're huge. Only, uh, red maples. Yeah. But they're small. They're small. I think what the Shade Tree Commission really needs, and just my suggestion to, to really look at here is, we have 19 compensatory trees per the ordinance and our arborist, and we have five being put forth by the resident. So really, I think, again, my suggestion is your purview is to determine what the amount of compensatory trees are based on what was removed, based on the arborist report. We understand. What I'm asking is for some mercy here. Yeah, no, I, to I'm, five trees I hear you. And make them large canopy trees. Yeah, please. Yeah, the, the, you know, the hard, I, we understand the mercy, but it, we were also. On the shade tree, I guess the hardest part that they're swallowing is, you know, you talked to Norsini, I came out, you, then you went and did the rest of the removals, knowingly that some of these trees were not a hazard, and now you're coming back with just five. It's, it's sitting in their stomach the wrong way. Isn't it? Well, right. When, you, when we rocked around too, John, you told me like it's going to be like seven or eight, and then it came no, back no, no, to no. nineteen. No, no, I never told you it was going to be seven, eight. I said there's seven to eight trees that are in poor condition. I said I could not give you or your wife a number of compensatory replacements because I didn't know. I didn't do the math. Okay. Yeah. Well, the other thing is, Rick's had an arborist come out, and whether or not everyone agrees with them or trusts them, yep. we were told from yep. them they were hazardous. So, and I watched them yep. drop branches, and I'm watching. And them. So we feel that felt that they were hazardous, and we were told at the last meeting that if we felt that it was hazardous we're, and we felt uncomfortable, then we should remove the trees. You, you have that right. The other problem with that is Rick's arborist does not work for Rick's tree experts. He's an independent contractor who works for a couple sure. different. Oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, the gentleman that came out from Rick's is not even an employee of Rick's. He's a subcontractor that works for different companies. He comes out. His job is to sell for Rick's. That's all he's there to do. So he's not giving you well, the valid information. I mean, yeah, you know, sure. We're just saying sure. it hasn't Absolutely. come out. You know, sure. it's, this is the information yep. we were given. Yep. And it's not like we took down, you know, 24 heritage trees. They were... We, can, we, we definitely concur with that. You know, I mean, they are planted. And you saw the yard. I, I, how I saw any the yard. child could sure. safely play. If they were falling. It was, it was a hazard Speaking in its own right now. We, we, all, we all concur with that. The problem is well, the way it was handled in the ordinance. That's but we, there that's wasn't that it was handled, though. Yeah, yeah, the ordinance is slightly so unreasonable. And we did, make, you know, we did talk to the, the commissioners. And I was like, I feel like this is really like extortion. I really do. I feel a little invaded. The problem is there's. We're not going to be able to take advantage of it. I know. They need to start. They don't. They need to have a lot of meetings. They're 
there's people that take advantage of it. They, un they understand it. You don't know how they just. Oh, I should go case by case because it's. We're taking it right now. We're the last ones here. We're, 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 we're just relaxed. They're going to help. We need to be in this lounge so badly. I know. I'm so perturbed. Actually, if you, if you folks have any questions for the arbors, we should be doing this through the, the microphone and the whole nine yards. situation is the same now. Those first eight happen to be the most dangerous. The other ones. Are you sure like um um the commission Elaine Elaine. She told you to take them out. Yes. She said go down via email or phone. Via phone. I understand it's her and her constituent or her you know cohorts that we go in front of if we have to appeal this. I don't want to have to do that. You know? And I actually she she can't she can't tell you don't take them no, I understand. Yeah. Right. And that basically just gave me a sense of comfort I know it's that bad. I could proceed. It's bad that Rick led you. And I've spoken to Rick himself. I know you have as well. Yeah. And I've spoken to his guys. You know, I. They're they're a major. They made money. I know they are. You know, they gave me the best price, and that's why I'm. Yeah, they got picked up. You know, but because I'm trying to do this in an efficient manner. I'm sure, I just bought this house. We, we saved money for years to get into Radnor Township because it's School. the best schools and all the best things. You know, I had no idea about this. You know, and, and, and we love it here. You know, and I want it to be green and have trees. I just can't have an uncomfortable feeling. And they're white pines. Especially for her. They're white pines. We're arguing over white pines. It's like... I read all the newspaper articles too about the guy, the, the restaurant guy that cut down all the white pines. And it's like there's a... There's a you can Google all this stuff and it's all after, you know. Like, I understand that. The developer that comes in and slashes and burns, like, I understand that, you know. I, I'm basically asking for an exception. Sure. You know, I'm not... Do you, wanna, it should do you be. want to provide them with more of that? What you, what you I will. You should. I, I can if we need to. I, I, I said a lot of that stuff at the last meeting. Sure, but like, Howard was not here and... Say it again. Yeah. 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 Like, I just, I understand for these developers, yeah, but, but not for that common house person. Let's see what they say. Let's see what they say. See what they say. Okay, thank you for your patience through the huddle. No problem, thank you. <laughs> um, we're recommending that um, we feel that the ordinance should stand as it's written and that if the Board of Commissioners feels there should be uh, some sort of mercy placed upon this case, then so be it. I thought, I thought 
we discussed that for the first eight trees that Rick's really responsible for taking down, we were going to absolve them of those, although you should, you should know the ordinance before you cut down the trees. But I thought we were going to go with the 11 compensatory trees. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. And we would still in some way, shape, or form like to see the Rick's being held accountable. And How do we do that, Steve? We'll leave that up to you, Steve. I'll go through the ordinance and his licensing requirements and take it from there. I will, uh, I will address him via letter, registered letter. Can you let us know? But what, we, we lose track of what happens, Steve, after, you know, when, with the tree companies. No, we're going from 19 to 11. We're going from 19 to 11. Okay. Of course, you have the opportunity, which we certainly expect you're going to take, <laughs> to go to the Board of Commissioners about that. Okay. okay. I'm just... So... We're going to say... What? That you were... We're, is we're basically giving you absolution for the what Rex is responsible for here, which is five? Seven. Eight. So eight, okay. So we're, we're going to deal with Rex on that, with that. Okay, okay, I understand. Now, that. after you knew the ordinance and you still went and removed those trees, we're, there's 11 replacement trees for the ones you took after the ordinance. And we're going to hold the ordinance for those 11. So five, it will not be acceptable. 11 is the number. And again, if you want to appeal that number to the Board of Commissioners, it is your right to do so. Okay, and how does that process work? Because I, I asked to, Steve that, and uh, he yeah, told me no I, one's ever appealed. I can, um, I can talk with you offline right, right during this meeting. I'll okay. explain that process to you. I actually have a, a slot for you on the agenda. I, I, not knowing what was going to have here, I had a tentative slot. If you didn't appeal, it went away. If you did, I wanted to make sure you had the ability to get on the, the next possible meeting. For the 11 trees, how many of them need to be large canopy, all that stuff? No, not all of them. Um, yeah, I think it would be seven. I need to review the, the ordinance again. Okay. And what about the $500 figure that I was told is not really the replacement cost of the tree? Again, that would have to be negotiated with the Board of Commissioners. Okay. Are, so you, that, are you asking that question as a contribution, or are you asking what the Board of I physically is? can't plant 11. Sure. I can physically plant five. I'm going to go to the Board of Commissioners and ask them to allow me to plant five and be done with this. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And I, I'm just really upset, and you can see in myself and my wife. Yeah, I understand. And I, I don't understand why. Trees, and I just think I understand when developers come, and I understand what we're trying to preserve 100%. But there has to be some discretion between a homeowner and, and their backyard versus someone coming in and putting in a restaurant or building a home and disturbing your neighbors and heritage and, and trees that have quality. This is right. like no, I understand. Quite an ex extreme. We didn't chop down a bunch of beautiful hundred-year-old, right. you know, heritage trees. Yep. These are undesirable white pines, and I'm required to replace two for those, but one for a heritage. I just think that formula in itself just doesn't seem very reasonable. You mean six yeah. for a heritage? Yeah. yeah the, what were the ones that were just like one? Anything over 30, and 30 inches of the heritage. Okay. No, the, the problem that we're having is, is one of precedence. Um, and if we offer, you know, okay, yeah, you go ahead and plant just five trees after you were aware of what the ordinance was, um, we could have a whole line of people out the door saying, well, they did it, why can't I do it? And that's, that's really something that if the Board of Commissioners uh, feels um, that that fine or that uh, compensatory planting can be reduced uh, or that the fee, the $500 fee can be reduced, then that's something that's it's beyond us. Okay. We understand. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yep. <clears throat> okay.
Okay, we have 410 uh, Orchard Way and a 39 inch white ash which was removed with Township Arbor's approval. 303 Hilldale, um, removal of Norway maple tree, uh, also approved by the Township Arborist. And 1230 County Line, removal of 53 inch silver maple. Um, there's also uh, on the agenda here uh, an illegal tree removal at 234 Aberdeen Avenue. Um, and that, do you know anything about that one, John? So we will uh, address that one at the next, the next commission meeting. Is there any other items on the agenda? Part. What, if there's an illegal tree removal, what's, what's the process there? It needs to be investigated, just like this one. And if we determine there's an illegal tree removal, we go to them and say, you took down this tree and you need to replace it with compensatory trees. Yes. And if they say no, is there any additional fine for an illegal tree removal? What's the additional fine? Yeah. Do we know what it is? It's, yeah. I, it's, I'm just asking yeah, I don't have so it in the, my, I mean, the ordinance is new and I, I don't have it. I have the ordinance. I can look. But so if someone takes down a tree, then we find out later on there's a fine for just taking down the tree without going through the process. Yeah. Okay. Okay, gang. All right. 